apologize for being 20 minutes late, but we'd like to open the meeting for Tuesday, May 18th, 2021. Public at 718. We stand for Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we just came out of non-public. Need a motion to seal. So I would move um, that the board just came out of a non-public session under RSA 91A3 2C, reputation and B, hiring of a public employee. And I would move to seal the minutes until such time as the board agrees that the circumstances for sealing no longer apply. Second by Charlie, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, first agenda number B, donation town hall Gale Library flagpoles. So this is um, from Sergeant Woods, Mr. James Foley, to be Hemlock. Dear Jim, Tom Newton would like to thank the veterans of Sergeant Woods community for generous donation of flagpole. For the Gale Library, having the telescopic flagpole will provide the staff with an easy method of tending the flag. Without your donation, the town would not have such an elegant means of displaying the American flag. On behalf of the Board of Selectmen, town residents, and our library staff, we thank you. That letter is going to Sergeant Woods. So I would move to sign oh. the letter to Sergeant Woods with our thanks. Second. Second by Kate. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And then this um, letter is going to North Shore Bank, Mr. Kevin M. Tanney, President, the donation of flag pole. Dear sirs, the town of Newton would like to thank the North Shore Bank for your generous donation of the flag pole for the town hall. The age-old flagpole was rotted and showing severe signs of instability. Without your donation, the town will not have such an elegant means of displaying the American flag. On behalf of the Board of Selectmen, town residents, and our town hall staff, we thank you. Can I get a motion to sign this? Motion to sign. Thank you, letter to North Shore Bank. Second by Chuck. So was the SPF from the bank? No. Oh, he's from the bank? Yeah, Nick John. Oh, I thought you said he was from. Uh, no, Aaron. no, I said he no, was. We from just, the we, other we one. just, went, we were really happy to do it. Um, Kevin apologized because he couldn't come tonight. He had a previous engagement, and I'm the branch manager over here, and I've been here about five years now, and the town has been great to us. So the fact that we can give a little bit back from time to time, we're happy to do it, and we're proud to do it, and I want to thank the people of the town of Newton. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank us you be very here, much. and hopefully we're going to be here for a long time. So I hope awesome. so. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I get one, John? <laughs> <laughs> do you need me to do anything? Uh, Allie second it. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank if, you. Yeah, if you do leave town, please let us know because you have we're our not money. Going anywhere. There, so. <laughs> we're not going anywhere. We're going up <laughs> north. We're heading north. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. You, guys have okay. a great night. you too, sir. Uh, number C, Evan Stevens Skate Park Grant Review. How you doing? Hi, Erin Stevens. I live at 31 Heath Street. Um, and this is Paul Murray. So we're here to go over, we put together an intent to apply for a grant through the state of New Hampshire. It's the Land and Water Conservation Fund Local Assistant Program. Um, and this is an intent to apply. So this is not the grant itself, but this would be used for the, the skate park at Greeny Park. So I am uh, I started the Friends of Newton Recreation group and Edvin was a part of that and many others and the, I, the Board of Selectmen, I know you guys all know me. Um, so we did the Greeny Park and now we would really love to see the skate park done. Paul is very passionate about skate parks and has a lot of experience um, in that area. And he actually created a, a group, Friends of Newton, New Hampshire Skate Park. Yep. So we've been working together. Um, Paul's been doing more of the design um, aspect of it. He's been working with Artisan Skate Parks mm -hmm. and they're really well known. They're doing the Amesbury Skate Park right now. They've done various projects in the New England region. Um, so he's done a lot of the work for the design and the quotes that I'm gonna give to you. Um, and I've done more of the paperwork piece of the intent to apply. 
Um, the intent to apply needs to come from a town official. So that's why I'm here. I know I've been kind of in communication with, with you guys. Oh, you have it up there. Perfect. Let's see if I can expand um, it. I do have printouts you. too. I'm just going to hand you because it's a little bit easier to. So this is the intent of to apply. Now, what's the next step after that? Then you. Oh, we got this. Do you need this? Oh yeah, all? we have it. We have, we have everything. Okay. Thanks. Um, Yeah, so this is the intent to apply, and they'll go over the initial project, then they'll invite you to apply for the grant. So this is like step one in the process. So you fill this out, you send it in, then they invite you to apply for the grant? Yes. So I couldn't find anything on, um, I know it's a 50-50, 100,000 each. Yep. And it's got a deadline of 2022? Yes. We would so, have to raise $100,000 by um, August 2022. What happens, number one, if we don't reach a $100,000 goal? Is there any penalties, fines, or if you just don't get the grant? Or can you reapply? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's any penalties. I assume you don't get the grant. I can ask for clarification on that. That's the biggest question. So mm -hmm. um, He did not mention anything about a penalty, but I'll... I can ask just to make so sure. If, if we do the intent and then we say, yeah, we want the grant, mm -hmm. but then we're only 60,000 or 40,000 short by next August, what happens? In other words, mm -hmm. do we absolutely need that 100,000 in place by August of 2022? Yep, that is the deadline because what they do is they, the states will submit it to the for federal approval. That's where the money ultimately comes from mm -hmm. and they will need to have that match before that time frame. What plans do you guys have to raise the hundred thousand well you have ten, right? You have ten. So yep. to raise the ninety thousand. So yep. I've got uh, can you, can can you just speak you to the mic a little bit, please. Yep, go ahead, Paul. Okay. Um, so I I've got quite a few different ideas for fundraising. Um, my cousin actually owns Anchor Pizza, a new report, and he recently got a trailer that is going to be able to like go to functions and things like that. He already offered to do it just for free, just to kind of get his name out there as well. And I was thinking maybe one of the things that we could do, which unfortunately with the whole COVID thing definitely makes it a little tricky, but I mean, you know, social distance kind of uh, gathering maybe at the park. And um, maybe I could have some sort of billboards with the plans and kind of get the awareness and for the town um, residents a little more aware. And I mean, everyone likes pizza, so it just kind of, you know, might be one, one <laughs> option. Um, there's also uh, an, an idea I had was to, I've, I've already talked to uh, Nicole that works at, um, the hen house, she said that they could easily give us a, a night, especially if it was a week night, because that would bring them more business to have either a raffle or some sort of um, the thing with the baskets and things like that. And I also have quite a few friends in the art and skateboarding world that are willing to donate items to put into the raffle. So that would be another option. Okay. Oh, yeah. and there's also, it used to be called the Tony Hawk Foundation. It's now the Skate Park Project. Um, that's another grant that um, I've been going through right now and trying to finish up to apply for. That comes out every, I believe it's every nine months you can apply for it. You can only apply for it once um, for one project, but that is going to definitely be one of the other things that I'm going to be working towards. Mm -hmm. um, so, next question. Even though you're applying for 100,000, can you go lower? So if you get some of this work done, and say you only need 60, would it be a, um, would they still give you the 100 even though you're only doing 60? No, no, they're only gonna match what you get. Whatever we put up, yeah. they match it. They match. It's gotta be so if we knock off, okay, if we knock off <coughs> 30,000 and the 170 is split, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you, when you first apply for this, you, you do this paperwork, right? You don't tell them how much money you're after, correct? Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, we do. 200,000. So then you would be actually in the beginning going for a $100,000 grant. Yeah. Right. So, so if you went for the $100,000 grant, you're not going to get 60. 
they won't give you the 60 because you applied for the 100, you'd be denied. Can you use the microphone? Otherwise, the people sure. on Zoom can't hear you. Um, now, they don't actually, the timeline's here in the email. So I believe they tell you if you get the grant at the end of, it's like January, February time frame, And they do that so that you know before voting season if you've got the All grant. Right, so we could probably so it is a, there is some time in between that mm -hmm. we can figure things out and you know work with the state. Um, Bill they Gagus Gages he was awesome the guy over there. So any questions that I have I can I can ask him. But he was really helpful and he said we have a very good shot at getting this grant. Awesome. And that's why I was so. Um, I really wanted to make sure that we applied for it because I think we have a really good shot. I think the question is, can we raise the 100,000 and is the town gonna to be willing to vote for the 100,000? So our goal is to try to fundraise and get as much money as we can to work up to that um, that number. And hopefully with the, if the residents know that, you know, we, <laughs> we're gonna match it. Uh, it was 100,000, that's a lot of money, I know, but we've also got, went through all this work to get the grant money. Yeah. We're hoping that it would pass. But I, but I think no matter what, this is uh, something we should do tonight. Yeah. Logical next step, and yeah. then we, okay. we have that's a pretty good workable timeline. First thing I just wanted to say, um, Aaron, for going above and beyond for Greeny Park. Thank you so much. Paul, same thing for the for the skate park. Uh, so I motion to have the chair. Oh, Kate, There's you have anything? Diane was waving. No, Diane. Oh, just for clarification, because mm -hmm. I'm hearing different numbers. You are requesting, your grant is for 100,000. So you only need to raise 50,000. No, right? the grant's no, 200,000. Yeah, huh? 200,000. No, it th says the cost of the project is 200,000. Yes. And they're requesting 100. You, the grant is for 100,000. Yes. 200,000. So the, the total project cost would be 200,000. With 50, 50 matches, 100 from each. Right. So but we on, okay, but on the application it says estimated uh, LWCF request is 100,000. That's why I want to make sure we have the numbers right. Right, we're requesting 100,000 from L, LW, LWC. Yeah. Okay. With a total project of 200,000. All right, so yeah. we would still have to raise 100,000, what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Yep. yes. Okay, just want to make sure the numbers were correct. Yep, and that's why I wanted to meet too. I hope everybody can take a look at what I wrote and you know the description the proposal the scope and if we want to add anything to that um because you know this is the initial application to make sure that we are invited to actually apply for the grant so if there's anything else we want to include all right so evan has a motion on the floor a uh, motion to authorize the chairman to sign the uh L land and water conservation fund local assistant grant intent to apply application second Second by Charlie, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, you're good to go, kids. Thank you. Right, thank um, you, guys. So you, so you need to sign copy back, right? Yes. So you need to take a copy. They can get it tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> so if you can come to the office tomorrow and pick up, so Tom can take that copy of my signature. Okay, Do you? is it just gonna be Larry signing, or? Just Larry. Just a chair. Just Larry. Okay, so let me let me remove Matt's name. Uh, they already did. The, the application that they well, has. This is the original one. Yeah, and then I'll send it to you, and then you can yeah. sign I, it with just your I name. I've updated it already. Matt's name's not on here. Okay, I've perfect. I've updated it. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Diane. <coughs> okay. okay. Thank you. All set? Thanks. Number D, EOC update. Mrs. McCarthy. Where'd you go? Is that the beach? I'm here, just took me a minute. Okay, I'm here. Okay, so as usual, I'm not going to give you the state numbers. Um, you can get that on your own. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I'm a little titty, but... All right, I'll get closer. Uh -huh. Is that any better? Hang on. Okay. Alice's phone wanted... Can you please do... <laughs> Say that again, what? Alice M's iPhone. Please mute. Oh, I'll, I'll need to mute you. I'll need to mute you.
All right, I took care of it. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> Is that any better for me? Yeah. yeah, much better. Okay, sorry about that. So, um, as usual, I'm not going to give you the state numbers. I'm just going to give you local numbers. So, our regional di school district, um, we have no active cases in our regional school district. Yay. Um, we've got 27 high school students that have recovered. We have seven memorial students that have recovered. Four middle, stu middle uh, school students recovered. And two from Bakey have recovered. Um, so no active, and that includes staff at our regional district school. So to update you on our calls, which are slowly diminishing. Um, so here's the latest conversation. Um, there is something called, and you may have heard of it already, called the New Cares Money Act, and it's by Gopher, so it's from the governor's office. And it's for infrastructure. So there's grants, um, primarily it's about water and safe drinking water. A question on the call was what about roads since that's part of our infrastructure and they recommended that we ask Gopher. I did call the governor's office and right now the roads infrastructure is not on there. Uh, doesn't mean it won't be but this is it was brand new to us so who knows maybe they'll edit it and change it. The other the other thing is they're reminding us and as you've seen the news you know it's so confusing you know. One day it's this way, the next day it's that way. It's reminding us that the new guidelines tell us that vaccinated people do not have to um, quarantine. But then they followed it up with, oh, unless you have symptoms, then you should maybe get tested. So they're still in this, you know, little wishy-washy thing. Um, another comment on our calls, and probably the fire chief knows this, I can't see the audience, so I don't know if he's there. Um, but the Fire Chief Association, which is the one that actually came up with what we call our E911, and that is the data that actually allows the fire chiefs to get all the information of COVID. Oh, I see him. The COVID um, patients are COVID uh, residents in Newton. So that, as of unfortunately this Friday, is, has been suspended. We will no longer have information on the individual town database for COVID uh, patients. So in a way that's too bad, but it is what it is. Um, the other thing is all the talks, the towns, what they're talking about, and clearly I actually see that that's on the agenda. I didn't know it was gonna be. Um, they're talking about town guidances and what we're doing. So some towns on our calls are saying um, they're open to the public now in uh, they'll take appointments, but they are actually open with uh, walk-in access. Um, there's some towns that say anyone, one of their guidelines, you know how we have our access guidelines and screening questions. Many towns are doing away with that and just saying that if you've not been vaccinated, uh, you should have an appointment and wear a mask. I don't know how we police that, We, you know. Um, there are other towns, uh, Kingston is one of them that is advising the public that masks are no longer required. They are recommended and they are now open their normal hours. Um, another similar town like Fremont is still um, honoring appointments, but they are saying walk-in traffic is okay and masks are recommended. Um, they're also telling us on these calls that as of now, meetings should continue to do social distancing for our live meetings. And if all are vac vaccinated, masks are not required. Again, this is a recommendation, not a mandate. Um, also on the call, EMDs are coordinating new guidelines to try to reflect what the current environment is, according to Governor Sununu. So everybody's kind of working on that. And I, I, oh, I already mentioned many towns have done away with screening questions, but are recommending masks. And I bring this up because I've been in conversation, Larry and I with Terry on a regular basis. And she wants to know, you know, if we, our guidelines are changing. And the only thing we can say right now is we do not have to do screening questions. Um, and masks are recommended, but not necessarily requ required. <laughs> So that's about it for my update. 
Oh, oh, got their hand up. Oh, <laughs> iPad's got their hand up. iPad, you have a question? Is that a question with their hand up? No? Okay. Trish, you all done? Yep, I'm done. And that's right. Thank okay. you, Trish. Any, anyone have any questions? So, Trish, you might want to stay on for a couple more of these issues next. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go to E, public access to town buildings and properties. Did you bring this up, Edwin? Uh, yeah, I just, um, I, people have reached out and said that they'd like town hall to be open back to normal hours. I want to see what the board, what the employees of town hall thought. Who wants to go first? You're making that a motion? No, I'm just, <laughs> I'd like to talk about it first. Well, and then discussion. We can, yeah. so, so this comes up all the time. So we are open, right? We are open normal hours, right? No, we're not open Thursdays from 12 to 8. Right, that's the only thing is we're, walk in, we're doing the... People want so walk-in. That's the only... That's people just want to walk in. They don't walk in, like we used to pre-COVID. Um, and, and with the other towns doing what they're doing, maybe we, we figure out a date and allow walk-ins with masks yeah, I, recommended. I think with, with the new CDC guidelines, we can, we can open and we can go back to normal hours if people still want to make appointments, that's fine, but we should still go back to the Thursday 12 to 8 and allow walk-ins. Yep. Um, you know, people are fully vaccinated, are fully vaccinated. I was looking for you. I'm like, where'd she go? So just, just remember this, and Trish, and Trish alluded to it, is the CDC released, well, first of all, on Tuesday, the CDC director said we should, last week, should keep wearing masks before Congress. Then on Thursday, they said if you're vaccinated, you don't uh, need masks inside or outside. I haven't heard the suggested method for determining whether people are vaccinated yet. I don't think the yeah, CDC. You, you know, yeah, you're going to prove it. Yeah, exactly. As so long right. as you know you're vaccinated, you're safe. Right, but how do you guys know that? <laughs> Yeah, and that is a problem, talking. Matt. I know Mary yeah. Jo's going to talk. Um, that was on the call because, hi, honey, because um, we can't mandate necessarily to see a vaccination card. That's why, unfortunately, this honor system is, I don't know, maybe it's less than an honor system. I'm not sure. Um, but each town is saying, well, because we can't prove if somebody's vaccinated or not, maybe we just have to say, um, that they've got to wear a mask and still do social distancing. So some towns are still doing that and some are requiring it and some are saying just recommend it. But uh, go ahead, Mary Jo, sorry. Okay, I, I have no issue with letting people walk in the building again. If we allow people to walk in the building again, there will be no appointment making because that defeats the purpose of making yeah. an appointment. I don't know why there will be you 10 both. people there. Okay. So yeah, and I have no issue with that. Um, the hours, I know we did a 12 to 8. My office isn't going to be open from 12 to 8 on Thursdays. Um, my, my new employee and I have been discussing it. We're going to give night hours, not 8 o'clock. I'm sorry, I'm too, <laughs> I can't get past 7. So, um, yeah, it will probably be more like, what is it, 8, 9, so like 9 to 6. Or, yeah, because it's 8 to 4, 9 to 5, 10 to 6. More like 10 to 6. We haven't really decided. Um, and it was only open because everybody else was in the building. There's still nobody in the building. That but everybody in. will be back. Well, like, like maybe, they maybe will. But I'm just saying my office is not opening till 8 o'clock on Thursday nights. That's my choice, and that's my prerogative. Um, DMV's on open at eight o'clock at night. Doctors on open till eight o'clock at night. Dentists on open till eight o'clock at night. If you can manage to get everywhere by six, you can manage to get to me by six. Especially where I can't require it, but I am going to kindly request and strongly suggest that everything that can be done online continue to be done online because we don't know who is vaccinated. We can't ask, we can't require masks. We start packing that lobby again, like we do on Thursday nights. We may find ourselves 
I don't know, in, in, a, in a spot. Um, just, you know, because if you, I don't know if you're going to do social dis, I don't know how your, what your plan is to open. I'm just letting you know that my office is not opening from noon to eight on Thursdays. How about something like uh, nine to 12 on Saturday, so people that are working. Oh, hell no. <laughs> oh, hell no. So what's the point we, 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 the several, offices, several years ago, se days. several years ago, we tried to do one Saturday a month when May was here. It was a waste of time. Mm, I remember that. It was a waste of time. You sat there all day, all uh, that whatever. Was a, that yeah, was just no, a I, we, we give the people. Because we have an awful lot of people, Mary Jo, that work and they can't I understand get it. that they work and, they're and nobody the has had an issue getting into the building when they needed to. Six o'clock or even six thirty is late enough. But that see these are my hours and then that's gonna be my hours. I will decide what my hours your for my hours office will be are gonna be. I know you will make that decision. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. I was just making And I just I and I know but eight o'clock really public. eight o'clock do you know how many nights I sat there at eight o'clock going you know, 8 o'clock is a long, long night. Except for the end of the month and the first of the month. Yeah, and that's not my issue. <laughs> but but no. to, to Larry's question, <laughs> my, and I'm asking the question, I don't know the answer, but so putting aside Mary Jo's hours for a minute, are we going to have any of the other offices? Select them, the TA and code enforcement. Yeah. Open late, um, you know, because I know the main draw in town is Mary Jo's window, right? People, mm -hmm. people have to come in to do their registration, pay their taxes or, or license their dogs or whatever. I mean, building department is, is a draw for some, but you know, we, we, I mean, it's clear just for the people at home, she's, town clerk's an elected official, she sets her hours, we set the hours for everything else. So that's what we have to figure out. You, you let us know what your hours are, what you kind of have now, and then we have to figure out what we want to do with these offices, so. Yeah, like I said, I'm still working it out, just working it out. Um, like I said, the past year on COVID has, has showed us a lot, a real lot, that people do not actually need to be here through building department, through, through what's been done. Like I said, a lot of things, as long as people keep doing things online that can be done online, and people do like it, there are some that don't, and that's fine. Even now, the ones that have to do things online that don't want to, I do allow them in the building. I, I can come and, in. And um, I, it's, and it's just, it. <sighs> I don't mean to be flipped by saying this, and it's not directed as you, but do we have a ton of people like saying, saying, oh my God, I can't just walk into the town hall on Thursday night at seven nope. o'clock. No, nope. like, me neither. Because my understanding is the building department has been more efficient, and maybe there are people out there who are in the trades that don't agree with me, but the building department has been more efficient because it's phone calls, it's emails, it's online requests for permits. Are we, are we in a position where, because Edvin's apparently hearing from people that everybody wants us to open again, do we really have this many people who are like, Thursday nights, I need Oh to yeah, there was no, nobody mentioned Thursday. It was, it was just uh, the walk-in. Yeah, walk the walk-in, and I understand that, and yeah, I, I yeah. have no issue with that. I miss the people like coming in. And I think six o'clock is fair. I mean, I, I work. Six is very fair. I work off shift, six to two, two so six o'clock is fair. I have no issue. Regarding, I don't think Nancy or Diane should be six. here on Thursdays until eight, there's no. We get nothing. I'm they, go they do, the there's no nothing. There. I, I honest, to be honest with you, I really didn't even know that sure you guys, the, you I get it, but mm. yeah. I, yeah. Once in a while I'll get somebody that needs a yellow tag, you know, for the transfer station. But that's it. But you yeah. Them now. I can yeah. if I need to. Yeah. So, so how's 10 to 6.30 sound? That's more than, isn't, how many hours is that? Well, you, well, you get paid lunch? Huh? It's eight and a half hours. Right. right, if you shifted your hours for that one day on Thursday, how could you shift it so 6.30 was it? It would be 9.30 to 6.30. But if she's only open till 6, we get, I mean, I don't know why. Well, I was, was going to ask her next if she'd try to 6.30. She, he's trying to get <laughs> you to go to 7 is what he's trying, so. 
<laughs> no, no seven, six thirty. <laughs> Is it Greenwich Mean Time or what are we? I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I'm not. I'm not setting my hours tonight. Okay. I'm. I'm saying, yeah. Let's get town hall opening, and if you have guidelines, yes. get them out there. So, so let me do. Let me do it uh, piecemeal here. Okay. I would move to reopen. To, maybe I can't do it piecemeal. Let me <laughs> until we know the hours. But I mean, I think the intent. The board is in agreement. We can set it by like their that. hours because they yeah. obviously don't want to work till eight. So we can do the, the yeah. what you say, 9 30, 6 30? That would be what I, that would get my 10 hours in. Okay. But so. not if Mary Jones leaves at 6. Leaves at 6 or 6 or 12. Then 9 to 6? So can can we do this? Starting June 1st, is that a Monday? It's That's a Tuesday, Tuesday, but. Tuesday works. So May 31st? That's Memorial Day. Day. Memorial Day. You guys aren't working that day? You're not going to be here. I'm joking, joking. <laughs> June 1st should be the start date. Do we need a traffic plan so we don't have five, ten people in the hall all at one time? Yeah. You know, this should have been all solved by, by now. You know we're coming to open we sooner or later. The board to give us guidance. Mary Jo, we ask you. Yeah, I, I, I don't have a we solution We give you guidance. You guys, are, uh, you don't want it. We're coming. That's my point. We, we have floor mats that are three feet apart. They're not I think it should be probably what five people max. I Who's going to police well, it? They, it yeah. yeah, I mean. Yeah. I mean, these are all going to be recommend. I mean, even the masks, I I'd like to recommend them, yeah, but they're recommended, it's not. It's not required. You not know? required, right? You can wait. recommend them. It's not required. I definitely want to recommend them. I, I think. Absolutely. Thanks. You, so. you got Kate up here and Trish want to speak. Hey, Kate. Yeah, hi there. I've been wanting to speak for a while. So I listened to everyone said, yeah, I get we want to open it again. We're all feeling the yo-yo effect of the CDC. Don't, don't, don't. My only concern is the safety of the people who come into the building. As you know, I'm that's very concerned about it always. And whether you've been jabbed or not jabbed, you can still get and transmit COVID, right? Not as badly. So I agree with Edvin that we should. Now, from what I heard, some towns are saying no masks. Others are saying, please still wear masks, I think, until, you know, who knows what the CDC will say next month. Hopefully, it's all going to pan out and we'll know more. I would be very much in favor of distancing and masks just while we're waiting to see, because we're not doing vaccine passports. Passports were live free or die in New Hampshire. That's what I suggest. Um, and I noticed there are, you know, Mary Jo and everyone there who's who's there all day is really important to us what you want. And I saw air purifiers on the list, which is great because you're still in an in enclosed space, which we know is not ideal. So those are my more than two cents. Trish? The only thing I wanted to say, I'm gonna go back to MJ for a minute. Um, so a lot of towns are doing just what Mary Jo said. We've kind of trained people, if you will, um, for the last 15 months to do stuff online. So many of the town clerk, tax collector people are saying, we've already trained you to do this. We still, uh, we're open, you can come in. However, these type of things like Mary Jo has on her website are recommended, please continue to do it online. And that does really cut down, the, the town clerk, tax collector people are telling us, that is cutting down on the people coming into town hall, realizing that probably only if you've got a new registration, brand new car or something, then maybe you have to come in. So they are recommending that we put that on the website, kind of like Mary Jo already has it, but maybe we should put it across the board on in all of our departments um, that continue to do uh, online, any online stuff, including the building department, which has been very successful. And then I think uh, what Kate said, and probably Edmund and maybe even Mary Jo, um, to just to take our guidelines, and I can come up with new guidelines for the door that basically say, um, to enter this building, ma uh, masks are required, unless you have a medical reason otherwise, until we get comfortable with that everybody's vaccinated. Just a thought, and it is stuff that we've been talking about on the calls. The, you know, the key thing is we have a very old building, mm. which doesn't have the, the kind of, it's not a bank, right? It's not laid out like a bank where there's room for people to do that. So I think, you know, uh, and I think Trish just mentioned this, there might be some sort of, you know, socio whatever that people will know what to do now, 
right? When they come in, they won't get on top of each other and they'll say, I need to stand outside because they've been doing it for the last year. But, but all of this stuff, and, and I agree <coughs> with, I think Diane said it, how do we police it? Because somebody's going to be in a situation where they have to police it because there's going to be that one person who's going to complain about something or whatever. It's, it's kind of like, you know, if you've ever worked at a convenience store and the person comes in and you don't think they look 21, so you ask them for ID and they don't have their ID and then you hear it from them, you know? So are we gonna be in a position where we're making our town employees downstairs tell people to get a mask or tell people to show a, a vaccine card or tell people you're too close, you get a, so it's, it's not easy, you know? Sign on the door says mask required. Yeah, That's simple. Yeah, but that goes against the CDC guidelines. Everybody which, else is doing it. Which the CDC has said they are guidelines, and the you should still look for what the business wants to do. But right. yeah, in healthcare facilities, they're telling people to wear masks. There's a whole list of places that still they're saying masks are required. So we do have the ability to do it and just see how it goes. Well, that's, that's what I'm leaning <laughs> towards is to see how it goes because yeah. if we were, if, I don't know, a test run, say, starting June 1st, where the doors open, open. Right, and we're going to leave the sign on the door that says mask required, doesn't matter if you have the vaccine or whatever, and we're going to see how it goes. Are people bunching up? Are people yeah. behaving themselves? Is it, do we want to do something like that? That's a great first step, in my opinion. And get them, they have the filters while we're at it. <laughs> yeah. That's what, on the list. What I'm hoping is because if people continue to do what they're doing, the online for the renewals and everything, and comparing that to the people who make the appointments to come in, the flow in the building is very slow. People call in the morning, can I get in today? Sure you can. And I just fill it in, and, and it's like it's still... They flow. I, I don't get people calling saying, well, I need to be there right now. Very rarely do we have four or five people outside waiting going, can I come in? I mean, and once or twice, it's like, hold on, I might be able to get you in here. It, the flow has slowed down. So I don't think we'll have too bad of a problem with people crowding on top of each other. I hope. And I do think people, when they are in the building, they have been very respectful, backing up when you're walking by. They are good about it. It's just, like I said, they, we don't have a lot of space. So, Diane, so get, ready. get ready. Here's a motion. Hopefully this will make sense. So I'd like to move to open starting June 1st for um, pre-COVID hours with the exception of the Thursday hours, right? We figured out what that was. Yes, right? yeah, yeah, nine to six. And, and masks will still be required as will social distancing. And the board reserves the right to change these based on how things go. Second. I have a second for discussion. Any discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so in on. On June 1st meeting, we're going to bring up the discussion, and you guys start thinking about it, is when we bring it back the, I think we have to wait for that general order to be lifted for the boards to start meeting live, planning boards, ZBA, and all that. Mm. I think we have to wait for that 12 to get lifted. They're, they're not uh, meeting live, those boards? Uh, no. I it means in person. Huh? person. Well, that's we what I mean. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're yeah. not meeting in we person. We did allow them to come in, but they're not. Okay. Well, but if but if they voted to, they could, right? They have so a right to vote. They to wanted come to, in. They could, yeah, right. Because yeah, yeah. you know. I know Rec is talking about. I don't think we should change it. that. Huh? I don't think we should change that. If they vote, what? if the chairman says we come in, we come in. But right, but they're not. No, because they're still they're concerned about what we're doing. But if if the on. if the order gets rescinded, then they don't have, they have the, to come they in have because to. you can't right. vote for Zoom any. Right. Once that they lift the order, anyone on Zoom that's an elected official cannot vote anymore at meetings. It has to be present. And if if I was a gambling man, I'd say the next 21 days, whatever that is. I think it'll be lifted by next week. Yeah, or somewhere around there. Diane, did you have something? 
Um, I would just look on your motion. You said something except about Thursday. I, I didn't yeah, quite understand. So, so if you could fill in there, what we because would we say for Thursday, 9.30 Nine to 6? Six. Six. Well, she hasn't set those hours yet, if so. You, if you agree to the 9 to 6 for those, forget <coughs> You're okay with that? Yeah. Like okay, now we agree. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, all right, so Monday through Wednesday, 8 to 4, Thursday, 9 to 6. Yes. Yes, please, I accept that amendment. Hopefully everybody votes in favor okay. of that. Okay, next one's A for town purifiers. What's that about? Um, Air purifiers. Uh, we would ask the last three attorneys to discuss this, what we would need if we wanted to um, feel more comfortable. For a town to mend his rooms downstairs, and we feel that there should be an air purifier, at least a bigger one outside of where the girls office where the people are standing. So how much are they? Um, I think Diane had 455.18. Is this from this spreadsheet? Is that the price, Diane? But why didn't you just go buy it? Because we need board approval to have it come from the general government building's budget. Under 1500. I mean, if it's something to do with COVID and all that, you had our blessing to just go out and purchase them months ago, really. Um, but so does the wreck in here for them? No. Yes. We, how much is the total, Diane, for all of them? How many do you need? You need like the one for each office? Yeah. Or is it in the hallway that's no, going? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'm sorry, be before you continue on this. So I, I didn't know this was on the agenda until I looked at it. So just so that you know, on our calls many months ago, we talked about um, air purifiers in town halls. And one of the highly recommended ones, unfortunately, wasn't, I, I, was, I couldn't really hear Nancy. I, it, it doesn't come on to the Zoom. Um, but the Hus Husqvarna is the one that was highly recommended for town halls. Um, it was like $879. Um, I have photos of it probably at home. Mm. Um, and it, for, for, the, for a town hall, what they're saying is, and of course this it is so convoluted, they're saying in order for them to be effective, if you've got the plexiglass up, it's not gonna give you the protection that you want. So to purify that particular space, unless what Nancy said, again, I couldn't hear anything Nancy said, unless you're talking about in Mary Jo's office or in Nancy's office. The ones on our calls were actually put in hallways of town halls that didn't have plexiglass blocking everyone off. They were very successful. Um, and again, it was, a, I've got the actual make and model. It's a Husqvarna and again, oh. It was like $879, something I'll like that. I'll leave it this way, and if the board agrees, that I'll have Trish work with Town Hall with Nancy and order whatever purifiers you need to order, whether it's one for each office or, and then one in the hallway, whatever, that you have our blessing. Does everybody go with that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You go with that, Great. Kate? Yes. yes, thank you. So, uh, Trish, when you get time, you can reach out to Nancy, go over the information, and whatever they have to order, order. I wish we ordered it six months ago because it would have been covered. I know, we would have no got covered, left. yep. Do you have a dollar amount, how much we can spend? She, on? I think she has, oh, well you're gonna, if you're gonna need what you're gonna need, so. Shanti measured each room, so we can go from there and we can always let you know if it's gonna be more than 1500 or whatever. Well, put them on two invoices and they won't be, right? <laughs> <laughs> have you learned that trick yet? <laughs> Okay, Town Beach signage. So there is a sign uh, that we put up there last year when we opened. Yeah. I think I sent the picture around, um, or at least to Diane to share. Uh, I don't think anything on that sign, that was our temporary order, I don't think anything applies anymore. So I wanted the board's approval to take it down. All right, so. Is that a motion? <laughs> let me, um, I think Wait. I have it here. Motion to. Let me just read it really yeah, quick right. so you're not voting for something you didn't know about. So. I put it. Yeah, because they didn't wear a mask anyway. Yeah, the um, masks were required if you got close. But. So the COVID uh, beach restrictions, I'll read them really fast. One was uh, 12 foot separation of groups. Barbecues were not allowed. Ball games were not allowed because we were afraid people would get it from Frisbees. Uh, cloth masks would be worn. 
when there's uh, no social distancing. Uh, the town RAF we did not put out last year because of contact concerns. Uh, we did put on there about the beach parking lot for residents only, which would not change. That's still right. on the fence. Uh, lifeguards, their duty hours, we can have those up there anyway and punishment would result in prohibited from the beach. All other remain in effect. So it's really the first um, Nancy. five. Nancy. So I would, I would move to take down the COVID uh, beach restriction sign from the lifeguard shack at Town Beach. I second. The regular, yeah. Yeah. yeah, let me add that and open the beach as we would normally. Right, all right. So he needs a second on that. I'll second. Second by Evan, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Review department head building priority list. <coughs> I'm going with the fire department if you want. Uh, sure, if you want to start. You want me to start? Yeah. Okay. Okay, the first one is the apparatus based signs need installing. They have them, they're upstairs, they just need to be installed. Uh, okay, time out. Here we go. How come there's no prices on here? Cost or quotes or anything? Well, well this is because this is just a, uh, a wish list. Mary telling you what the needs are. This, this question okay. was asked. Okay. Yeah, it's really a wish list. Right. Like working just... internet, they're working on it. Okay, they have six tall lockers. They want to replace them with 12 double lockers so that everybody can bring in their own personal clothes, put them in the locker. So when they come back from the fire station, they can leave their stuff there. They don't have to change clothes. Uh, the building sign, I know he wants the Newton Fire Department sign up there. There needs to be a security camera at the rear of the building, uh, the front of the building going towards Merrimack, that section over there, that grass all in there, it's all dead, and it doesn't get mowed by the guys that mow it. They don't take care of that. The fire department's been taking care of it. That's something that needs to really be done. Uh, a, a, a light for the uh, flagpole. You need to have a, when you have a flagpole up there, you've got to have a light on it so nobody flies into it. Uh, Why are you on that subject? Hold on. You have flagpoles that you guys are getting. That, does that fly all day and all night? Yeah, we have a light out front. Yeah, okay. Yep. And let's make sure the library has one. Mm -hmm. They do. Uh, number, number 12, epoxy the apparatus floor. We're not going to be doing that. That's that's roughly around forty thousand dollars. They got to grind that floor and okay. mm -hmm. epoxy. So take 12 I, don't, up. I don't feel as though we're going to be flying on that one. Uh, the safety complex street sign, the one down front. They wanted to replace that. Uh, Here's, here's a big one, number 14, is the driveway at the rear of the building, safety issue. When they get that new fire truck, when they go around the back of the building where they put on the shed for the uh, fire suppression, the distance between the shed and the side is very, very close. And they could roll that fire truck over. It, what it needs to be is brought out at least another 10 feet around that area, filled in around that area. That's really important because actually what they need to do is put them yellow poles that they have out in front of the fire station around that building as well. So these guys don't clip it. Right. Oh, you, you can ask, ask Ziggy, it's, it's a dangerous situation. So I don't think you can do that because you would need to reapply for an alteration of terrain. Well, well they're gonna have to do something. Well, I, if, this is gonna they be can't back it in. From the front, they can't back in from the front. They can't. They can back it in from the front, but if they go, have to go around that building, they could possibly drop off that banking. Am I right, Ziggy? Right. But why can't? So, but they can. The, so another an well, option then would you, be what you're doing. Is an you're option taking would be to then, back it in. Then you should take out the three back doors because they're useless. Then we oh. take them out. No, only for that one truck. Yeah. I'll just all, check they're it all, to all the same. All, all the trucks are going to be the same thing. I mean, yeah. if you've got a, if you've got a guy coming around that building, he gets over too close to the site. It's already eroding. Now. I'm just Correct? telling you, you would need an alteration of terrain permit. Well, in order they'd to have to get that. an alteration get of terrain one, yeah. permit. But you, you get one. Then. Right, you get I'm one. I'm just telling you that what you need. 
What uh, fish? And, and Except I, for not in Massachusetts. I think she was agreeing. I, th I think what we had, had talked about is once everything was done back there, the pump house and everything, we we're going to invest uh, the money that we have to complete road in terms of paving and leveling everything yeah. off. So I, w I would think that's part of it. If you're going to do the area near the police department and complete the whole thing, you should go back there and do that. I don't think you can pave the back. Yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know, but, you yeah, know, I, it's, it's I, something we should know. It's one of the, we're not going to solve it tonight. No, right? so. but just be aware, <coughs> I believe you cannot because it's an alteration of terrain. Yeah. Okay, next is uh, 15, is the apparatus ceiling fan. There's uh, ceiling fans on one side of the building. There's not on the other. It's such a high building that the heat rises up there and it stays up there. It's like 120 degrees up there. If you have them ceiling fans, it'll push the heat back down. You'll save more fuel. And repaint the administrative area only. Walls are getting dirty. And people leaning up against them. Something we should maintain. Um, there is somebody that has a question. iPad, do you want me to? What? iPad has a question. Yeah, sure. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I do. Can you uh, please identify yourself? My name is Alice Dunn, and I live on Smith Pana Road. And you're talking about the territory around the fire station that we paid all this big money on, and now you're saying that all of the equipment needs to have, it needs to be changed because of the flow of the equipment. Where did our taxpayers go? We, we our tax, tax dollars. We were talking, um, sorry, I have to mute one of my, one of my equipments, but we were, when we voted on this fire station, it was supposed to be all inclusive. And now we're finding out all these little things that are adding up to thousands of dollars that the taxpayers have to pay. Who is responsible and who is going to be taking on uh, paying for it except the taxpayers? Yeah, we're, I don't think we're saying tonight we're going to necessarily do that. No, these are just the wish lists. Yeah. No, I know you're not saying that tonight you're going to solve the issues, but, I mean, you you owe the taxpayers, uh, you, you are responsible to us, the <coughs> taxpayers, for all the money that we have put into this building, and we expected it to be fully completed, usable, with no problems resulting from it after it was all done and paid for. Now we're finding out sprinkler systems, exhaust systems. Uh, now we're even getting into territory of moving trucks around. I this would... is uh, getting really out of hand, and you people are the ones that we trust with our tax dollars. And now all of a sudden we're finding out that uh, more money is needed. And every single time I turn into a meeting, there's more money needed. Well, that that would be a that would be a, a question for the GC that's doing the job. Oh, I know. We're playing the blame game, right. aren't we, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman. I can't hear. Wants to speak. Excuse me? Tricia wants to speak. Oh, go no, Chris, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. I don't know if this is gonna help this young lady. Um, first of all, I was on the safety complex for over seven years. It was never a complete, um, full ball of wax, completely covering everything. That building and what we voted on and what we mailed to every single resident in town was the shell of the building. All these other things were in addition. What they're talking about right now is just because of the sprinkler system, pump house, I'm gonna call it, and Ziggy can correct me or, or Edvin if I'm calling it the wrong thing. What they've realized is just when the trucks come out and go around it, it's tight quarters. 
um, but there is there's nothing that has to be changed we we've got a great building and what you and I and everybody else in this room has voted on is exactly what we expected and that initial price tag was just the shell it was for nothing else so I hope that clears up um, there's nothing wrong we don't have to redo anything worst case if we have to do an alteration of terrain um, that's easy we've done many of those it's not a problem it just means we're gonna extend out some topography a little bit to make it safe for the trucks so nothing erodes but there is absolutely no issue and any firemen that are here in the station feel free to jump in I mean in town hall I can't tell who's here Okay, Charlie, you done your list? Yep. All right, who's gonna do town hall? I can read town hall. Well, I thought somebody was from town hall would do it. Oh, that's somebody from town hall. You can it. read it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 2021 town hall repairs. Uh, should I read the quotes as well? Can I, can I make a suggestion? Um, this is how I would approach it. I mean, you can tell me if this is a bad idea or not, but if you look at the format that the fire station priority list is in, you know, with a description, potential vendor cost, quote, and a priority number, what if you took all of these lists, you put them in the same format, Excel spreadsheet, obviously you're adding a column for the department, right? And then to me, the uh, highest priorities are life safety and code, and then the sort of aesthetic stuff is lower. So we could color code them based upon what's life safety, what's code required, what's you know mm -hmm. aesthetic or nice to haves or whatever. And then we could come, we could kind of digest this list offline, come back together, and start looking at the life safety code stuff and prioritize those, and hopefully. Uh, we don't have to exercise people to get quotes until we think we want to start to introduce that, rather than going line item by line. I like that. That's Especially with some of the department heads not Yeah. Being. I like that idea. Second. <laughs> Somebody think? I believe it was only the police, the fire, and the town hall that has items that need to be looked at by the board. Yeah, but I like to get quotes and prices on. Well, no, that, uh, the first thing that Matt said, the way, you know, kind of prioritize where things are for everybody. Yeah. Pick, is, that, is that a possibility? Pick the, well, you guys have to pick the items with the input from the department heads, and then we can move forward from that. Because what I'm saying is, if you have something that's code required in one of these buildings, right. we kind of need a quote, like, right away. Right. But if you have something that's, you know, uh, a light fixture or something that we can wait on. We don't really have to go yeah. through the exercise of getting a quote. But we only yeah. have so much money, so we need the board to tell us what you feel is priority and code compliance that we're trying to meet. Dan, are you able to put this all, or wh whomever, to put it all on one spreadsheet with all the departments and kind of, you know, code compliance? I think Diane did that when we did the budgets, and it's still out on the shared folders. Okay. Right, but I think the intent of this action for the department heads was to refresh that list. Right. Because well, there we, was some stuff that wasn't on there. Exactly. So yeah. can we Because I read again? that list and that's why I was completely Exactly. Look at I mean, do it again. We, yeah, what, I mean, yeah, we got what we no got and we nothing. can't manipulate they others. Yeah. They should on, we have to tell, we have to tell them which ones yeah. are worthwhile going after Because out of the 18 items, hey, we might be able to take care of 10 of these for five grand. Right. I, away, but I submitted the same list that the boards looked at before, and we got lists back that were a lot more than what we had on the first list. So we're, we don't know what to do with it. Right. So Every time you ask, you get more. List. Hmm? I like it all like this format. It would be great. Well, I... I was going to do that, but then you kind of mentioned to you emailed me and told me that the one that I did was wrong, so I stopped doing it. No, I said I needed prices on. No, what I'm saying is I did the fire department, and you sent me an email basically telling me that I did it wrong, so oh, I stopped doing it. That's what he it. said. Well, I did stopped doing it, so I left it the way it came in. And I that's can why change I said it. If, if, if it deals with the fire department, 
go to the vice chair. If it deals with the police department, go to editor. If it deals with any maths departments, go. Okay, so don't do come to me. Because I, didn't I go to the chief, he tells me something, come you tell you. me something, and he tells me. me something. I didn't come to you, you came to me and told me it was wrong. So Correct, I stopped. Correct, because that's it. what he told me it was wrong. Well, does the board need to figure out what you feel is life safety? We got a list that's by part of the that's part of this exercise. Basically, I think. What about think reading this list? Shouldn't we read it? Well, I, I the think. Without the prices what, and so we know what they are? We don't I have I think what we're, what we're saying is that the. To sit here and go through line item by line item tonight is probably not the best use of our time. Correct. If we have, I always say apples to apples, if we had this lined up in the same format and could somehow tick down this thing, you know, offline and come back together, I mean, I'll do it if I have to do it because we're getting pushed back well, here. What so it sounds like I'm going to have to do it. Is that I, the I was going to do what it. What I would recommend, <laughs> can I recommend that you tell the department heads to prioritize life safety first. Does that make sense? Uh, code compliance. Well, they've code already compliance code compliance code compliance only. And then your wish was they've already part. done that. Okay. You Guys, you want me to just do it? Is that I can, what I'm... I'm just not sure, I mean. I'll, ju I'll do it. So, I'll make the spreadsheet. Like if the board is okay with that. Cool. Because I, I think they've already given us the input that we're describing. They've well, put their uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven right, but next you, to it. But what, like but you said, though, you're saying life safety. A flagpole light to me is not life safety. Right. Sign isn't life safety. Right. And so we keep and getting he's up that. there, and that's up there in his priority list. So. Right, but I. Could we I, break it down a little further and just say just only go that's back. That's exactly your what we're saying. That right. we need to do that next. Right, so what I would like to do is have the department heads just say, give us, give me only the life safety issues. In your priority Then list. we can prioritize those. The problem is, is every time we ask, we get other things. And we, every time we try to change something, we get flack on it. Right, so I think we drew our line in the sand before this meeting, right? So this is kind of it. If somebody's gonna add something after this, um, I'm going to be skeptical of why we need to add it unless something all of a sudden happened. Mm -hmm. So I don't. I'm not looking for more work to do, but if I have to uh, put this together, I will gladly do. All so. right, G cable operator. We no, just yeah. switch topics. What, what's the plan? Oh, I mean, if you want to do it, fine. But I think the department heads should be able to come up with their own list with how much it's going to cost and their priority. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm not. I'm not going after costs. But they've given us their priorities from what but I'm saying. But they haven't all given us cost. Right. I mean, the cost, somebody else is going to have to do, but the priorities but they've the, given but us. But the list isn't in life safety code compliant order. And that's what we tried to get. <coughs> I tried to get, and I did not get that. Well, that's what but we're going to do. Let's take another run at it first, all right? Okay. Because right. what I'm saying, because I don't, I don't not think I'm, I'm being exactly. I, I don't think I'm being clear is that let's put it all together, yeah. right? And then the board can kind of tick off okay. what they think okay. is life safety okay, and what so is not. Okay, so you're going to make those decisions yeah. of life safety. Okay, that's well, fine. Well, basically because, you know, they've kind of given us a one, two, three, four, five order, which hopefully they were leaning on the life safety and code as a higher than a, you know, a light or something like that. But yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that's a good idea. Okay. It's so what's, what's actually going to happen now? <laughs> <laughs> so you want one spreadsheet. Yeah. So do you, do you... You can do it by departments. So I can do tabs? Yep. Down the I wouldn't do tabs. No? Uh, you want it all on one yeah. sheet? Well, you said. I'll just do it. <laughs> okay. I think, uh, I think that's okay. probably the best way to proceed. But You're still going to do code, though. I mean... Code yep, compliance. Yep. So I'll, I'll come back to the code board. Code life with, safety, other. I'll, I'll send it around to the board to take a look at. So, Matt, I'll go back to the fire chief and have him prioritize this. Looks like he already did, though. No, in order. Well, that's what I requested, and that's what I thought he gave us. Yeah, but the science can't be more important than the... Uh, that's what I'm well, saying. Well, that's what we're saying. That's what we're... Well, that's, that's what I said. I'll go yeah. back and I'll get him to put it in order. Yeah, that's... Of one. Through 12 and how he wants it done. That's cool. If because it's not that's, already that's not, this is this doesn't work for me neither. Right. You know, I mean, 
Well, that's what I requested, that he prioritize it. And well, he, he, what he did is he just wrote them down, to be honest with you, I can yeah. see that. Yeah. But I, I'll get him to go one through uh, 16, no, four through 16, or no, five through 16. And put it All right, able operator. So we're gonna need to uh, go out for um, a new cable operator. Doug is not gonna be able to uh, continue. Yeah. So we need a backup for Jamie. So I had put out the job description there for you to read and uh, an ad. If you are okay with that, we'll put that in the paper. When's that gonna go in, do you know? Say what? When will that when will go in? Win? Win. When will when when we'll we'll win, win a newspaper? I, okay, one at a time. Nancy, what's he saying? When will it go in the paper is what they're asking. When you tell me, I can put it in the paper. Okay, <laughs> did you okay. guys read the job description? Yeah, it yeah. looks good to me. That's fine. Do you have um, jo Doug's resignation right there handy? No. We, at the next meeting, we'll have you accept he's already quit, so we need to accept that right, resignation. Yeah, so you can put that in the paper. Okay. Typically at um, you know local schools, uh, and yeah. not just our high school, but I'm, I'm thinking right, like yeah. a Whittier Tech or a Northern Essex okay. might allow you to post that. these things for free if you email them. Okay, so I can try. Worth a Google. You want someone who can keep at the job for a while, not isn't gonna leave after a few months. True. Right. Yeah, and it's, what's the pay? Is that not, they don't, you don't post that, okay. Okay, we all set on that. So number yeah. H, intent to cut on tax map 5-5-10-6. Nancy, is that in this pile? Uh, that board needs to sign that to new intent to cut. So I just need the board to sign it. I'll submit it to the owner and to the Department of Revenue Administration. So it's in here somewhere, right? It should be. Yep. Okay. Anybody have any discussion on that? No. Okay. Hasn't done it, right, Nancy? What's that? He hasn't, hasn't cut yet, it. right? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> what was um, the map number, Larry? You had uh, tax map five dash five dash ten dash yes. six. Yep, that's the one. Thank okay. you. Okay. Number I uh, trimming I cutting trees at town motion. hall. What? Do you need a motion for them to sign it? No, they can just sign it. It's yeah. okay. typical. We'll yeah. put that on from town hall trimming the trees. Um, we're we having issues, Diane can speak on it, but we uh, are having issues with that same tree between here and the neighbor. Oh, there's a letter to the neighbor, right? Yes. What do you notice? Okay. Um, we've talked to the road agent, our tree warden, and we've talked to the person who was putting the, uh, the flagpole up, and that tree is ready to break again. It's gonna take down the wires, the um, flagpole, the town hall roof, so. We need to send that out to the neighbor. You guys read the letter, Edmund? Uh, yes, I, okay. I saw it. So yeah, you I'm need a motion to send? It. Motion to send the letter to, I just had it up here. Motion to send the letter regarding the town hall tree to the neighbor of the town hall. To, to Kathleen Robo. Okay. Second. Second by Matt, any discussion? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 So yeah. the other thing is the Gale Library needs some work done too for trees. So, uh, Gale Library is not on here. Because it came in late. We, um, we don't have anybody that we can contact. Um, the road agent uh, employee isn't able to do it because he's busy doing his road work. So do you guys have any suggestions? <laughs> Who knows a tree guy? I mean, could we schedule the road agent employee or is he not? I think he's busy doing roads. Okay. So. I can Mr. Chairman? To a couple of people. Yes. Um, so I'm sorry. Um, so I'm listening, and I don't know if this will help or not, but uh, the road agent, in coordination with the Conservation Commission, we've got um, KMA Trees that is helping us on the conservation land behind the Quaker Grove Cemetery, so he may be able to help out. You might want to try him. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, so does the library, uh, they looking for us to pay for it or are they taking it out of their money? 
Well, it's our building, so it's in the, on the land, so we would have to trim the trees that they need trimming. Do you have a quote on it? No, because we need to find somebody first. Well, we have, I'm well get Jack, three have quotes. a couple quotes to bring it back to the next meeting. Get three. It, three. Three quotes. If it's under 1,500. If oh, that won't be under 1,500. That's a bucket truck. Well, which one? The, oh, I, I don't know about the one. We'll, we'll look into it. We'll look into we'll look it. We'll look into it and see what we got. But the one over here isn't ours. So that would be the neighbor would have That's to That's not ours. <coughs> right. Just a little information that you know. I had a tree from Peachy's yard fall on cars in my yard. His insurance company wouldn't pay because it was considered an act of God. And so, so I, I had to run it through my own insurance company, which I didn't do, but uh, I would have had to run it through my own. My own insurance company would have paid it. Well, we're trying to avoid the accident. Maybe they can take care of it like they did the last time. Maybe. Okay, number J, contracts. A, Armon IT service provider. Uh, that was me. I asked to have that put on. So the reason I put it on, um, after reviewing the contract with Armon, I saw a discrepancy, and I wanted to see what the board thought about it. Okay. So in, on June 4th, 2019, the board at that time voted, um, Selectman Doggett, voted moved to authorize the chairman to sign an IT contract for Armon Networks to expire 18 months from the signature date, which was December 31st, 2020. At no time during that meeting did anybody say that the contract can auto renew. Okay. So I wanted to know what the board's thought what was. Months of 20? Uh, December 31st, 2020. That was the expiration. December coming. The, the one that just happened. Oh, okay. So the contract was signed by the chairman, but it was an auto renewal contract. So how did it get renewed? It's an auto renewal. If you don't call them, they don't call you, it gets renewed automatically. My question to the board, and Matt might know better since, you know, he's the lawyer, uh, is that allowed? Because the board voted on an 18-month contract, that's it. So the... <clears throat> The, um, so we're holding over is essentially what happened. Well, no, the contract was signed. The, the contract was signed as an auto renewal. So every December 31st, if you don't call Armand and they don't call you, yeah. it renews for another year. Yeah. And it, you know, it, we have an escape clause, but I just. So who put the auto renewal in? Do you know? I have no clue. It was. It's, it's probably the vendor. They would. They would do that. But, but I think at any rate, if. It, if you make a decision prior to December 31st, we can do. We have we can give a 60-day notice, yeah. but I'm asking the board what your thoughts about the fact that it is an auto renewal and you know it never came in front of the board to be an auto renewal. It did. We had a contract that was signed on July 1st, 2019. Um, I think it was in the selectmen's meeting to do it till December of this year. Yeah, that's June June 4th, 2019 meeting. Right, for 18 months, which, for 18 which months. ends this December. December of 20... No, this year. 18 months from July of 2019 would bring it up December 2020. 21. 2020. Oh, 2020. Yeah, yes. I see what you're saying. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, I, no, I just, no, sorry. I, I, I'm like, I could have sworn I got the dates right. So, yeah, I just... Uh, maybe we can table this for next time, but I just want... No, so basically you're saying that this past December of 2020, they automatically renewed it and didn't come to the board to vote on or... Because the contract that was signed, the, the contract that, you know, again, the chairman was approved to sign a contract. So you want to make sure this year, before December... Yes. Yeah. I just want, but I just want the board aware that, you know, we are in an auto renewal contract and so that we, we have that to... Probably come to the board around like September. Uh, 60 days prior, I would guess, so... so yeah, September is fine. Okay, all right. But, is that okay? So yeah, the, we should put something on the agenda in advance. Yeah, that we have to start talking about. And 2021, 2022 fuel bid. Uh, that's also me. I noticed that the fuel contract expires on May 31st. Uh, Diane explained to me what we usually do. I just think that, I mean, we, we should probably send the RFP out now since it expires the 31st. Do we have we don't to wait? Have all the numbers yet? 
So we're waiting to see how much fuel we actually use. We, we're thinking we're going to get topped off in either the end of this month or in June. Mm -hmm. So then we'll have an idea of how much fuel we need. Okay. So then would we put out the RFP then next meeting? Probably not next meeting. Well, when I have the numbers. Yeah, yeah when you have the numbers. So we okay. usually put it out in the end of June probably. Okay. All right. That's all I got. Okay. Employee evaluations update. Uh, there's a spreadsheet Matt asked me to prepare um, just to kind of keep the department heads on track. Um, let's see, where is I'm it? I'm opening it right now. Yeah. So the key column here to look at is completed. Yep. And out of so I did my best count on the police and fire department and the other employees and the other departments to come up with a number of what is the total amount to be completed or uncompleted and then what's been completed. So, so far, we, I think we have six that are completed. So <coughs> um, I would suggest sending this out to all the departments to say, as of today, this is a summary, just a you know friendly reminder. Everything's due, due June 24th. So now, yeah. Matt, <coughs> so that you know, I am doing the transfer station and the fire chief. I'm doing Pete. Yep. And uh, John, uh, and I'll have them in there for the 24th before the 24th. Sounds good. And you said I didn't have to do Shanti, right? Uh, you don't have to because he was done in December. Right. So um, it's up That's to the board if they want to have him. You know, we've got a couple that were done in December last year. Yep. If you want them done in December if, or by December this year, we can do those again, or, or it'll probably hold off until June of the following year. I think. Okay. I think to me, it's the twelve-month calendar thing, right? So for us to do somebody that we just did in December and June doesn't make sense, but now we reset them for the June. To June, count. okay, yeah. That's, yeah. that's what we kind of thought you meant by that. Okay, L, first half of the 2021 tax warrant. So you need a motion to um, sign the first, the tax warrant. Motion to sign it? Yeah, and all the, the whole board needs to sign it. It's mm. downstairs, Edvin, if you want to move Motion to sign the 2021 first half tax warrant. Second. Second, Second. by Charlie, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I've already signed. So that's downstairs. We're going to sign it. Yep. Yeah, it's on the table. Yep. There's two okay. of them. Uh, so there's two of them. Oh, they're in the folder. There's two of them. Left. Two of them oh. down there. Okay. Yep. Up here. Manifest. Oh. Okay, I'll do the manifest. Thank you. With my glasses. Sign the manifest, dated May 18th, 2021, in the amount of seven hundred and eighty-two thousand eighty-two dollars and seventy-six cents, of which. $716,003 goes towards the June San Juan Regional School District payment. Second. Second by, was that Katie? That was me. Edwin did it. Sorry, Edwin. <laughs> Any discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Sign cable manifest, vendor manifest dated May 18, 2021 in the amount of $1,033.51. Second. Second by Edvin, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sign the Ambulance Revolving Fund Vendor Manifest dated May 18th, 2021 in the amount of $360. Second. Second by Edvin, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Sign the Police Special Detail Revolving Fund Manifest dated May 18th, 2021 in the amount of $1,336.97. Second. Second by Edmund. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Sign payroll manifest for a period April 25th through May 8, 2021, with a pay date of May 13th, 2021. Second. Second by Edmund. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Edwin, can you do the tax abatements? All right. Uh, motion to sign tax abatement for tax map 6-14-7 
in the amount of $620.64. Second. Second by Charlie. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Signed the tax abatement for tax map 6-8-2 in the amount of $27.76. Second. Second by Charlie. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 We just do the next two. I don't All right. Signed veterans tax credit beginning in tax year 2021 for tax map 7-3-28-14. Second. Second by Charlie. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to sign veterans tax credit beginning in tax year 2022 for tax map 12 2 11. Second. Second by Matt. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, requisitions. Wait, uh, wait, he, wasn't your boy supposed to talk about one of these? He left? I think he walked out. As he walks out. He's just like the chief. Uh, well, there's a requisition here. Which one you want? 2577? Yeah, I'll do 2577 first. Uh, this is for 25 pages uh, for $11,721.03, which I'm not in favor of. I think it says on that requisition it's not in his budget and we don't know where that money would come from because it's not in our budgets either. A any discussion on this? Did everybody look at it? Yeah, I don't think it's needed. Huh? Which one is this one? The 2577. I think what, he, what the issue was, pages? he ordered pages. 25 pages because the internet kept going out and it was... Um, he ordered them? Locations to requisition them. Did you? Oh, I he did not I order them. Okay. What? You said ordered. He, he didn't order them, right? Oh, no, no, he didn't order oh. them. No, no. Oh, good. I, I already told him that I wasn't gonna. But this was to replace the the uh, the issues that they had at the fire station with the internet of calling out members for calls. That this would have solved the issue. So he submitted it the requisition as being a fire chief saying, well, I got to do something and leave it up to us to say no. So <laughs> I got Charlie's thoughts, thoughts, Evan. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm voting no on this. If Matt, I'm not voting no, I'm, I'm voting let's table until we get the internet worked out. Yeah, we don't even know Good what's one. gonna happen. Okay, so I'll, um, Matt, you got a motion to table requisition 2577. Yep. Got a second? Second. Second by Edwin. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's tabled. Go ahead, Charlie. Okay, requisition uh, from the fire department for uh, requisition number 2578 in the amount of $3,415. And this is for the, uh, there is three bids on this. Uh, paid out of the fire department 2021 radio fund 4220. Three, one, two, and this is for the uh, the new fire truck. This is the radio for the new truck. Yeah. Okay. So is the new fire truck going to be called Engine Two? Yes. Yeah. It's called what? Engine, engine two. two. I think so. Yeah, because Engine Two goes away. Two? Okay. Do you always call name uh, the two, same sorry. number? Yeah, because it switches. Because Engine Two is leaving. It's so, leaving. Uh, okay. Yeah, because we already have an Engine One. Okay. So we were kind of wondering. I said I thought they were getting rid of that one. <laughs> All right, so um, anyone have any discussions on this requisition? It's I'll for the new fire it. truck for the radio. And it, again, total is? 3,450. All coming out of that revolving fund, right? Yeah. No, it's coming out of his budget. Out of his, his budget. budget. His, his budget. budget. Out of his fund. Better. Oh. Paid out of the fire department 2021 radio fund. And the, I guess the line item is 4220312. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Do you need a second on that? I second. I don't think so. Here oh, I is. seconded it just in case. Oh, second by Edwin. Sorry. Me, you got another one here too? Oh, be, I thought there was three. Maybe that answers your question oh. about the whole. Sign requisition 2579 in the amount of $4,949 for 104 
It's 100 feet of hose, four inch oh, diameter. Yeah, four inch by ten it's, of them. It's for oh, 10, four, four by 100, by 100 hose. foot hoses. Yeah, for the the new fire truck. So that's sent into a new fire truck. Correct. Because we were questioning <laughs> that too. This is coming out of budget. It doesn't it I doesn't say I on this one. I think it's coming out of his equipment fund. Does it say it on the requisition? Or? No, it doesn't. Oh. I don't have the requisition for that. Really? You? Per state bid list, ASAP. I don't see where. Then we don't know unless it's, it's coming from this. It's a quote, Biomatic, 49 yeah. and Fire Tech. He didn't put where it was going to come. No. Um, we'll table it till the next meeting. Yeah, what I mean is, it, what's the priority level on something like this? Um, those are the hoses. Yet. Well, the new truck might be in by the next meeting. I don't know how long it takes to order it, and he's on vacation till right. Monday. That's why the captain was here, but he walked away. I just my, my worry is that these are hoses that we're going to use in the new truck, and if for some reason the truck's done, I mean, even if it doesn't come out of his budget. It's like buying a gun and not buying bullets. You need the hose. Yeah. So let me do it. So I would move to approve the rec for the, um, based on the quote for the new hoses for $4,949 to come out of the fire department budget. budget. And if for some reason the chief uh, doesn't want that, then he can come back and see the board. Right. I think At least you can order it. Yeah. Yes. So. Second. Second by Edmund. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Authorize the chairman to s sign a reappointment for William Ingalls as Forest Fire Warden for 2022. Second. Second by Edmund. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And the last one is authorize the chairman to sign a reappointment for the following deputy wardens for 2022. Uh, I saw a slip here and it didn't have John's the fire chief's name. I think he's off. automatic. Oh, okay, so I'll leave him out. Richard Dupree, Jeffrey Gerbish. Gershbach. Okay, Skip Meridian, James Ryan, Ralph D. Essebrook, and Robert Zelinsky. Well, you should probably still say the chief's name just in case. Okay. It's on there. It's, it's the on very here. first one, yeah. yeah. Uh, I can't pronounce his last name. John Alcadino. Cadino. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to mess it up. <laughs> I'll second that. You did, Kevin. Did you second yes, that? Yes, second, yep. Thank you. Second by Matt. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And. Uh, the, the, the B, Veterans Tax Credit and Tax Abatement. We already did that. We did, did the that, requisitions right? and did the appointments. Did the requisitions, did the appointments. Do we do, do we have any minutes for approval? Last Public. meeting. So I would move to approve the Selectman's non-public and public meeting minutes dated May 5th, 2021. I'll second. Second by Edmund. Any discussion? Did you have non-public for the first All in favor? Aye. 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 Put a check down. Yeah, so yeah. those never made it around tonight. I don't so. think you know, we, we did, did any. Yeah, that's right. We didn't have a non-public. I think that's the non just, okay, so just I'm the gonna, public. I'm going to rescind the part of my motion that said non-public minutes. Right. Right. That's right. I forgot that. I'm just so used to having it. Right, right. So, so. is there still a second for me? Uh, yes, second. Okay. And we're still in favor? Aye. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay, uh, review non public. So, A, March 21st, 2021 vaccination clinic reimbursement. Yeah, that was you. Um, I think that was, was that the, uh, the one at the um, Packer Meadow? March 21st. Was right? that the Sanborn one? Was it Packer Meadow or Sanborn? Well, March 21st, I had my shot at Packer Meadow, so I'm assuming that's the one you get reimbursed for. Well, I don't think we put in for anything for that. Okay, because that's what it says on that sheet, so that's why it was kind of like, okay. There was a, a, a direct deposit that we received for 3000 something, Larry, and it said vaccine reimbursement. 
and yes. I sent it to you and Trisha to find out what that was. I, I, I want to say this is for the high school, but I will double check tomorrow. Okay. okay. So we, we can make the motion to accept. You don't, I don't think you need to do it. I just wanted you to announce oh, that okay. that's got reimbursed. Yeah, yeah. So we're accepting the 5,927.50. The vaccination. Da, 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 da. I want to say it's the high school. Okay. But I could be wrong. Okay, is there anything else on this wish list? So just a reminder, your next meeting. We have a public hearing yeah. on June 1st of acceptance of reimbursement funds and impact fees. Mr. Chair, I have a quick, yeah. I have just something quick. Uh, so last week was National Police Week, and I just wanted to quickly thank the police officers of uh, Newton, Chief Jewett, and his officers for always going above and beyond for our town. And, uh, you know, we thank them every day for what they do for our little town, and uh, I hope they, they know that we're always here for them. Excellent, thank yes, you. Thank you. Uh, can I also mention till May 31st is Memorial Day. Oh yes. We're gonna have a vehicle only parade that's going to, I think we are gonna shift the time to 9.30 from the safety complex. So we are gonna obviously have fire police in uh, any highway vehicles or whatever, but we're also inviting anybody who has a classic car or motorcycle or wants to decorate a vehicle for their business or organization is welcome to come down. We're gonna line up. There'll be a route published in the next day or two. The goal is to be at the, uh, the Willow Grove Cemetery on Whittier Street around 1030, in which we're gonna have a small honor ceremony and then that will be that. So it'll uh, be. Are we have an uh, uh, MC? No. Yeah, it'll uh, it'll be as normal as possible um, for our hopefully last Memorial Day of. So it's going to walk as well, taking. Yeah, no, no marching. So um, if if you want to uh, be a part of the parade with your vehicle, come to Eight Merrimack Road. If you just want to be part of the honor ceremony, then, then just go come there. down to the cemetery Five for B, about 10.30. Yeah. Yeah. One question I did have, yeah. somebody asked if candy can be thrown from the cars. It, uh, it can, okay. but uh, just the, the just thing we slow. always say is when you do it, throw it away from the kids. Yeah, 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 no, I get that. And throw it out I just, of the road. Yeah, I was asked that, I'm like, yeah, let me, uh, so. Motion to adjourn meeting. Motion to adjourn. Can I get a second? Second. Second. Check by Charlie. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.